as priests, there's always a real temptation to soften church teaching, especially with the hard issues that face us today. Why? Well, because we're all human beings and we all like to be liked. We all want your affection, and so we, especially if something hard comes along, we're like, ah, oh, we take it easy or we try to ignore it. But we do you no such favors when we soften the Lord's teachings. In fact, if I did that to you, I would be a very bad shepherd. Even though I want your affection to be liked, that's not why God calls us to be priests. This is why the example today of this great saint we remember, St. John Chrysostom. He's a fascinating, fascinating figure in church history. Born in the year 349, he would eventually rise and become one of the most important archbishops in the entire empire. He would be the archbishop of Constantinople, which would be a major, major city, would become because that would become the capital of the empire. The emperor Constantine had shifted it from Rome to that part of the world. And what makes St. John Chrysostom such an inspiring figure? He didn't care if you like church teaching or not. It is said that St. John Chrysostom, in some of his preaching, when he would preach in Constantinople, his homilies would go on for two hours. So don't complain to me when my homilies go long, huh? I'll just point. Look at St. John Chrysostom, two hours over there, and I, and I feel good. <laughs> the empress would be sitting in her lofty spot in the cathedral. She had a, the empress at the time was an empress called Exodia. She had a seat there, and at that time period, the church and the state were deeply intertwined because the empire now was officially Catholic. In the year 380, the whole empire becomes Catholic. And so when you have rich people that are now Catholic, what do they try to do to priests? Influence them. But not St. John Chrysostom. He would stand there on his pulpit like I am now, and the empress was doing bad things. And as her shepherd, he would call her out in the middle of mass. How do you think she took that? <laughs> St. John Chrysostom would be exiled. And in the year 407, he would die. He could have let, led a, a lofty, comfortable life Oh, when you have rich patrons, oh, you can live lovingly and, and eloquently. But St. John Chrysostom knew that's not his role. The same happens today. Oh, it happens today. Priests and bishops are easily coward to obey the edicts of the rich and powerful. But they are not good shepherds if they do. You know, when I first got here, I heard a story I won't say which previous pastor, but one of your pastors in the past was confronted by a parishioner. The parishioner gave this previous pastor an envelope full of money. And the pastor said, oh, what's this? He says, if you do this, something that the parishioner wanted, there was more money where this came from. Luckily, this pastor refused. This parishioner thought they could buy influence. We are followers of Jesus Christ, his teachings and his teaching alone. We're not called to be liked or to be loved, but to proclaim the beauty of the church's teachings. St. John Chrysostom reminds us Fidelity to Christ is first.